With the upcoming Disney Plus show, you might be wondering who this Moon Knight guy is. Well, I've got the basics for you in this video. Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka The Mad Dog, and we're back with another video. I've done a few of these Who Is episodes now, but I thought it was time that we take a look at Moon Knight, who for legal reasons, I have to say, is not inspired by or was created in response to The Dark Knight. Was that good enough? Real name Mark Spector, even though he has gone by different identities, Moon Knight initially debuted in August of 1975 in the pages of Werewolf by Night issue 32. Created by Doug Monch, and no, I'm not sure if that's the correct way that you say it, an artist Don Perlin, he was initially brought into the Marvel Universe as a hired bad guy by the committee. They gave him the name Moon Knight and tasked him with hunting down and capturing the werewolf. However, when he learned what the committee were planning to do once the werewolf was captured, he did have a change of heart and decided to work alongside him. He was supposed to just be a throwaway fill-in character that wasn't expected to return, but when Marv Wolfman and Len Wein noticed Moon Knight, they wanted to give him another chance in the panels, and he was given his own more fleshed out solo story in issues 28 and 29 of Marvel Spotlight. But for the next four years, Moon Knight would only feature in guest appearances in a handful of issues here and there. That was until 1980 when he got his first ongoing series. He was finally given a proper fleshed out origin story where he was born in Chicago as the wayward son of a rabbi that later went on to be a heavyweight boxer. Fun fact, if he was a heavyweight boxer in the 60s and 70s, which was pretty much just before his debut in comics, he would have been fighting in the golden era alongside the likes of Frazier, Ali and George Foreman. So if he'd just tried a little bit harder, there's every chance that we could have ended up with a line of Mark Spector lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machines. And I don't really know the reason why Marvel hasn't decided to make that an issue of what if. Spectre's career then went along the military route because he was a marine before he ended up being a hired mercenary. During one mission to Egypt where he was hired by Raoul Bushman, he was betrayed and left for dead after a fight to the death, which, in case you couldn't tell, he lost. In the sub-zero temperatures of the nighttime desert, he's found and carried by the Egyptian people to a temple and placed in front of a statue of Khonshu. The god visits Mark in a vision and says that if he will become his avatar on Earth, he will give Spectre a second chance at life. Mark accepts and challenges Bushman to another fight, and this time round, he manages to win. He then returns to America and becomes known as the Fist of Khonshu because at that point he hadn't joined up with the committee and they were the ones that gave him the name Moon Knight. He's also now got a silver costume which resembles the shroud worn by the god. God. Having invested his money from his previous jobs, Mark manages to earn quite a sizeable fortune. However, this investment is what really allows him to get off the ground with his crime fighting career as Moon Knight. And after he's summoned back to Egypt so that he can be given some moon based weaponry, which, yeah, apparently is a thing, his image as Moon Knight that we all know and love is now complete. Now, normally in a Who Is, it's mostly just an overview of the character in their history, but Moon Knight's a bit of an odd one. But Mark Spector isn't the only alter ego of Moon Knight because he's got dissociative identity disorder. Order. This means that he has separate personalities which all behave and act in different ways, but they don't know or have any other kind of recollections of what the others have done. And if you're wondering what the difference is between this and multiple personality disorder is, I'd recommend asking somebody who didn't take a useless degree like myself. We'll go over some of the main ones, but there's probably going to be one or two that I'll leave out just to make this video a little bit more concise, and obviously we've already touched on Mark Spector, so now we're going to look at Stephen Grant. Fun fact, I went to high school with somebody with that name. Grant is his millionaire persona, which he uses to buy property and also fund his lifestyle as Moon Knight. Then there's Jake Lockley, a taxi cab driver who's got a short temper and a violent way of showing it. This one was created so that Moon Knight could fight crime at a street level, but also also understand what was happening on the streets before he ended up spilling over. Mr. Knight is another one of his more famous identities who doesn't want to be a vigilante and instead wants to fight crime alongside the law. There's also a debate that Conchu is one of the personalities that inhabits Mark, but I don't really want to get into that debate right here. And a lot of people don't like to acknowledge this, but at one point Spider-Man, Captain America and Wolverine were part of the personalities that Mark Spector created in the Bendis run that went on for about 12 issues. But that's not too important because it doesn't seem like that's carried over into any of the future series. Moon Knight often gets put in the same category as someone like a Punisher because he's seen as an anti-hero within the Marvel Universe. However, despite the fact that they're both willing to kill the enemy and they do it in a violent fashion, Moon Knight never really seems to take any real pleasure in doing it, whereas Punisher is of the more sadistic taste. However, he sees it as something more that he needs to do rather than something that he wants to. However, if you look through his history, you can still see him enjoying himself stabbing someone through the head with a clock hand. In terms of powers, people often think that he doesn't have any, but he does get enhanced strength 
stamina and reflexes depending on where the moon is in its lunar cycle. Due to his dissociative identity disorder, he's immune to most psychic attacks, but he also occasionally gets visions from the future. He's skilled in multiple martial arts and he can take a good punch because of his time as a boxer. And because of the time that he spent as a marine, he's familiar with quite an array of weapons. Speaking of which, he has many in his arsenal, including the moon-shaped batarang, I mean boomerang, bowlers, throwing darts, a grappling hook, and a golden ank that can sense danger. Mark keeps a close circle and no, that's not some kind of shit joke at the fact that there's a moon motif going on. First of which, we've got Jean-Paul Deschamps. He's a pilot that Spectre met whilst he was employed as a mercenary that he's given the nickname Frenchy. Marlene, an archaeologist who was there for the initial expedition to Egypt when Mark became Moon Knight. She later becomes his girlfriend and even later than that becomes his wife. The Landers family, which includes the mother Gina, who owns a diner and also is an informant for Moon Knight. She has two sons, Ricky and Ray, the latter of which is a mechanic who also fills in as a pilot when Frenchy isn't around. You might have also seen Moon Knight in other appearances throughout the Marvel Universe, such as when he was a member of the West Coast Avengers, or when he joined the Defenders, or when he was hired by Misty Knight for the Heroes for Hire. He also had a brief interaction with the Marvel Knights. The Secret Avengers also recruited him, and he was also part of both the Ultimate Knights and the Ultimate Warriors. In terms of villains, he's attracted quite a few over the years. Wait, kind of like myself. And some of those were quite big name villains in the Marvel Universe that you'd often see the A-list is fighting, such as Bullseye, Ultron, and Norman Osborn. But his arch enemy, who we've already touched on, would be Bushman, an African mercenary that hired Spectre for the mission to Egypt that led to him becoming Moon Knight. He's got no powers, but he's trained himself to be in peak physical condition, which, since all these lockdowns, isn't something that I can say about myself anymore. One other interesting villain that I will give the spotlight to, despite the fact that Moon Knight's got quite a long list of villains, is Shadow Knight. Pretty much what the Psycho Rangers were to the Power Rangers in space, Shadow Knight is to Moon Knight. Except that under the hood is Randall Spectre, and if that name sounds familiar, it's because it's Mark's brother. In terms of reading material, if you are looking to get into this character, I can personally recommend Charlie Hudson's run from the 2000s. This is actually one of the first comics that I ever brought with me own money because I just loved that cover from David Finch. And I also really enjoyed Jeff Lemire's run from a few years ago. Bendis' take on Moon Knight is a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine, even if it isn't the best representation of this character and I've heard nothing but praise for Warren Alice's run, even if I haven't had a chance to read it myself. But as Moon Knight isn't that old of a character with his first solo series only really coming out in the 80s, you can pick up some of those earlier titles which I know have been collected in epics, and it's also been recently released in an omnibus, and you shouldn't really have too much trouble with that. And that's my who is on Moon Knight. Now this is a character that I did read when I was first getting into comics, but I haven't read every single title that this character's ever appeared in. When I do this series, I just try and give the best crash course that I can so that people can feel like they can just jump into one of the books because I never want it to be a case that someone feels like they can't get into comics because they don't know who a character is. I understand that this isn't comprehensive, it isn't perfect, but that's not really what I'm going for here. I do hope that this helped at least one person, especially with the Disney Plus show that's coming out, and yeah, if this got some kind of MCU views associated with it, I'm good with that. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, why did you get this far? If you're thinking about picking up any titles, I definitely recommend checking out our sponsor, Organic Price Books. There's an affiliate link in the description down below. And if you use code woof woof, you will get $2 off your order. Share this video where you can. I know there must be a few people who are wondering who Moon Knight is in the preparation for that new TV show. Check out my links down below. There is also a tip jar if you do want to support the channel. It is greatly appreciated. But why not check out one of my other videos? But until next time, just make sure that you stay safe. Stay reading the best books that you can find. And stay mad, all you dogs. Woof woof! See you at the next video.